It's a sort of nuanced series of steps that need to be followed in order, carefully. Take the orange top off this thing. You screw this into here. And it should be pretty tight. So now this, uh, whatever these are called, <laughs> uh, knob, uh, when you, tur you turn this and then the liquid from here will drain into here, right? So just like we combined the two black, the black epoxy and white epoxy uh, from the jars, the same principle here. These two need to combine and when they do, they'll start to harden and so forth. Okay, so they're combined. So you Okay, it wants me to take yeah, take this little tip off, twist it off. You uh, turn this back to close it up. Um I just realized I'm reading these Spanish instructions. I don't speak Spanish. I know a little bit, but oh, there we go. Once you rip this little top thing off, um, you attach this hose. You just kind of press it down on there. Try to get it all the way down. And you shake it for like two minutes. Funny, I'm just reading the instructions. The instructions say don't attach the hose until after you shake it up. But, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. Load up our caulk gun and uh, we're going to open this back up, okay? And now we're going to start injecting. We'll start injecting one of these ports as we go along and because they're all open, the idea is that you start injecting at one end. So let's, we're going to start at this end. The liquid flows into the crack, and you know it, that it's flowing into the crack because eventually it should start to flow out of the other ports as long as they're connected to the crack. You just just clicks on to the end there. You'll see the liquid start to flow out air bubbles and there we go okay so it kind of sneaked up there and now it's flowing into the crack load the liquid in slowly uh, it takes this is a long process it takes a while so I'm gonna close it by pulling it out and disconnect the hose and I'm gonna move on to the next one Look at that. I just saw liquid in there. So that means probably one more squeeze. Our patience paid off. All right. The liquid is now coming out of the next port. All right, just dripped out. So I'm going to close it by pulling on it. And now what we do is we take the hose out of this port and close it, hook it into the next one and push it down. And now we're gonna inject the epoxy into the port that the liquid just flowed out of. No leaks yet, hopefully no leaks at all. Leaks are a pain because then I have to go through the whole epoxy process again with our jars and our goop and our dollops and all that. So we'd like to avoid that. Ooh, hands getting tired. It might be nice for them, for Simpson or whoever, you know, makes your, your kit 
have a little like graduated, you know, measuring ruler or something on the bottle so you can keep track of where it is. All right, moving on to the next port. All right, as you can see, the liquid started started to drip out of the next port. So we're gonna close this one, gonna disconnect, and then we're gonna reconnect. Follow the same process. Oh, all right, we have success. Liquid's now dripping out of the next port, the final port. Reconnect. And now the trick is just sort of knowing when nothing else is going to go in. It can be kind of hard to tell sometimes, but the important thing is that we filled up most of the crack. Now it's just, uh, you know, putting on the finishing touches here. We injected all of our ports. Uh, right now, the epoxy is inside the wall. Uh, we used... Let me show you how much epoxy we ended up using. So we've got about that much left. So we used quite a bit. That's all inside the wall right now. It's bonding to the concrete, it's hardening, and it's working its way into every little crevice to fill those gaps in the wall. So, all we have to do now is get rid of all that gray stuff. So, I'm going to go get my angle grinder, one of my grinding discs, and we're going to get to work grinding all that down and flattening it, smoothing it, and getting it ready to uh, clean up and paint. 